Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back to York City, where, in today's episode, we can retain our Premier League title. Oh boy! So as I kind of predicted last time out, we're back in time for the Manchester City game where we can mathematically win the title if other results go in our favour. We did that by beating... Leicester and West Brom 3-1 3-2 respectively both away from home. First of which was a second half comeback and the second of which we scored three goals in the first half. They got a second half what turned out to be a consolation but boy did it have me a little bit worried. Oh yeah and now Goodoy is injured as well just to make things even better for me on that front. What that does is leave the table a little bit like this. We are guaranteed Champions League football now. That was the bare minimum target for this year. Tottenham do you have two games in hand on Manchester City. So they could technically get back into fourth, but they fell away quite dramatically. Pretty much as soon as they lost to Arsenal around the December period, they just never really recovered from that. Uh, Arsenal challenges dropped off as well, of late as well. Not quite the second half season bottle that they had. Of course, they had a very good, strong start to the second half of their season, but it's dropped off a little bit in recent weeks. Man United are the only team that can still catch us, so I don't really know who they're going to be supporting in this next match against Manchester City. Intriguingly, we do also play the lunchtime kickoff as well. We get to play our game and then we just watch and see if somehow already relegated Aston Villa get anything off Man United. Well, they're going to do have a game in hand. So if we beat Man City here, we go to 84 points. If Manchester United don't win, they're on 74 with three games left to play. So that would be a maximum of nine points they could still gather in their remaining three games and therefore cannot catch us at all. So the only way we win in this first game is if we win, they lose. Of course, we can win the title in the second game today regardless. But we've got to get to it first. Now there is some minor good news on the injury merry-go-round that is our club at the moment and that is as people get injured people are coming back again as well. So whilst Godoy got injured against Leicester, Cantoro came back the match directly afterwards. So that's good news. Uh, Barwick's back as a rotation option. Shao Nan's no longer suspended and Silva is actually nearly returning to fitness just as Carpentier takes a knock himself. So returning to, hmm, returning to fitness tomorrow. Like he's functional as a human being right now. Like he's his condition and sharpness are still both okay. Tempted to slip him onto the bench somewhere as an emergency measure. The lineup for this crucial Manchester City game is Christian in goal, Saxton, Azata, and Rick on the back line. Everyone's back there. Everyone's fully fit again. Xiao Nan on the right hand side, Vadarsson, and Seri in the middle. Back to the original two starters for this year there. And Madeira, Vidal, and Cantoro on that front line with Alawa Silva in front of them. Considering that basically all of them have been injured in the past month or so, at some point, no longer feel bad about having three world-class strikers. Speaking of world-class strikers, by the way, don't think I haven't been tempted to sign that Lubinovic of West Brom. It's like Spanner in that particular work is the fact that Chelsea have bid for them this week. Season isn't, in, season isn't even over. And the fact is Chelsea, of all teams, who have both Nathan Watson and Damiani already. I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit surprised by that. I mean, I can talk, but... Lubinovic's Scarapor actually has him better than all of our strikers and we know how good ours are when they actually want to play, seemingly. I'm really glad Godoy got a goal before he got injured because that would have been so tragic if he'd gone the entirety of the rest of the season without scoring again. I should just say as well, against West Brom, Carpentier had two disallowed goals. Madeira scored, it's 1-0. Yeah, so Carpentier could have had a hat-trick before I took him off. Lovely chest down from Madeira that starts this move. You don't really see chest downs in the engine for whatever reason all that much, but... Great strike from the edge of the box. And it's our favourite Enigma Madeira that gets us underway for a potential title winning weekend. I will never understand Madeira. That sort of two maybe that sort of that sort of two year period where we genuinely thought about just getting rid of him because he wasn't performing week in, week out. And then suddenly, now that we've become a title challenging side, he's decided he actually wants to be good most of the time. Still have those old patches. But then who doesn't in my side, to be honest, these days? Saxton. I don't know how he's managed to do that. And of course, after the last episode, I I was sort of left with a what I'm going to call a fullback dilemma. Because on the right-hand side, I've got a fullback who seemingly just fouls everyone. That's in the bar. Good job, Sari. Despite having low bravery and what have you. And on the other side, on the left-hand side, I've got seemingly three fullbacks who don't like putting tackles in at all as evidenced by the fact that Saxton basically runs away from anyone that gets near him when they attack. Yeah, it's a weird fallback dilemma I'm in. Vidal on the edge of the box, heads it down to Madeira, back to Vidal, and 2-0. Lovely worked goal that. 
I, lo- I do really want to see this in 3D. And Vidal's actually up to nine goals for the season. I mentioned it earlier in the season. He's not the most prolific of those, those three attacking midfielders, but he's getting there. Heads it down to Madeira, who lays it back off to him onto his feet this time, where he can do that. By the way, I say that <laughs> Saxton doesn't make tackles at all. He's actually the only one being booked in this game, just to be completely contrary to what I'm saying out loud. <sighs> Vidal, that nearly went in. And somehow, somehow we are dominating Manchester City better than we dominated either Leicester or West Brom. By the way, in case you hadn't noticed, I have moved again. I've not really moved. All I've done is rotate in the vain hope that it might stop my audio sounding like I've recorded in a bloody cathedral. I'll be honest, I wish my surroundings were as grand as a cathedral for it to sound like that, but no, no, it's just a boring, normal flat. At the very least, I'm getting new scenery every couple of weeks. Madeira... Cantoro on the far side. Cantoro straight to Diego Costa. Alalor Silvers managed to smash it directly at the defender who was a yard away from him. Did I just see they brought on a centre back for a midfielder? They've actually gone more defensive, which has somehow worked out because as Arthur's apparently pushed, I think it was Tanaka. Curvo takes the penalty. It comes in off, off the post, and Christian doesn't move at all, seemingly. Either he doesn't move at all, or he just jumps directly upwards. As well as saying, surprising, that's Curvo's second goal of the season. Now I'm not really sure. If that's factored in his Real Madrid goals, or if it's just his goals for the Premier League. But the fact, if he's only scored two, that's incredible. I mentioned at the time in the January window when they signed him, but 184 million they spent on him. 184 million. I did actually have him on my radar when he was at Benfica. But of course, he turned out this good, and bigger teams than I were interested. And obviously never came here. But you can see the difference there. Cantoro is made to look decidedly average. It's actually been a while since I've shown you Cantoro, by the way, I feel like. Right, bizarrely, his crossing finishing are a bit irritating, but the rest of him, particularly the good technicals, dribbling with first touch, passing and technique, yeah, all pretty good. He's weirdly brave for a winger as well. So it's 2-1. Tanaka heads that one clear. Costa will get to it first. And tackled by Saxton. I mean, that's actually a great tackle. He's not shying away from that one, despite being on a yellow card. Curvo is completely abandoned on this side, though, where Saxton should be. And he's got his third goal of the season. Right. Um, no, he did He did score 6-18 in 18 for Real Madrid this year. Does have 7-24 in 24 in total. Hang on. They bought him in January. How has he only played twice? Ah, <laughs> broken pelvis in the first. This is his return match. This is his second match after his return. I've just realised, of course, because it won't have updated the appearances on his table either. That's a smidge irritating. Okay. So we need to pay attention to David Curvo's Manchester City going forward because apparently with him in their side, they're unstoppable. A few bookings going around, which I'm not appreciative of. So let's just get them off and preserve. Silver's on a 6.5. Carpentier's on as well because he's the only striker at the moment who seems to be scoring. Five minutes of injury time, there was a brief flash of a highlight there which just vanished straight away and we've been FM'd by Manchester City. Actually, more specifically, we've been FM'd by David Curvo. I am very unhappy with the fact we've thrown it away. That's for sure. If we assume that Manchester United gets something out of their match, I'm not really sure what a draw here does to the permutations. I will have to double check. Yeah, they definitely got something out of that game. So it means they're five points behind with the game in hand. Total of nine more points will get them to 86, which means we cannot mathematically win it if they continue to win next match either. And I'm fairly certain their game in hand is after the Cardiff one as well. There's a very, very good chance that we win the league during a day that we're not even playing. Because I think their game in hand might be against Liverpool. Just in case you're wondering why Christian has stayed in the first team despite the amount of goals I've gone in of late, it's because he's now actually statistically better than Baxter overall. Still still want to see more out of the top end here, of course, and the anticipation. But even the poor stats are going up now. Turns out playing him pretty much every game will actually develop him. So it turns out Manchester United's game in hand is against Tottenham, not Liverpool as I first thought, and well, never mind. By the way, I've gotten to the bottom of the randomly stopping recordings of late. I've discovered that the spacebar stops recordings on OBS, so I have to make sure I don't accidentally click on it while trying to progress in the game. What a fun balancing act this is going to be. Who th- Why is spacebar? Worst part it is, it's not even a hotkey or anything like that, it's just somehow inbuilt. I can't turn it off. Ha ha, Milan. Got what you deserved there, didn't you? In case you're wondering, Liverpool also messed it up against Benfica in the other side of things. I won't pretend Benfica haven't had a good time of things in this particular save, but come on. Yes, I can see Pochettino. Quite bizarrely, I've had no press conference questions about the title. How in... how... what? How... what? 
Why would Jonathan Gonzalez's poor form at Valencia have any effect on Christian Pulisic? Oh, they, they say poor form. It's 15 goals in 29 appearances. It's not bad. Admittedly, it's 47 total appearances with 19 goals. So slightly less good in other competitions. He's had a five player of the matches. Poor form. Uh, yeah, it happened. I mean, it was affordable, but if they're spending 78 million, we would have had outdone that probably. And is 78 million worth it for what is probably only a fractional upgrade on players like this? Right, so I think I'm going to, I'm going to decide to have a player who can put a tackle in at left back, apparently. 17 on this lad, he'll do fine. Kovalev, say this lad as if you've not been seeing him for the past three months. He may be technically worse star rating wise, but you know what? We'll pull him back a smidge. Otherwise, we'd lead the line with the most in form of my strikers and no other changes. All right, three points at the Cardiff City Stadium, please. And then, and then there's a showdown with Norwich at the end of all this. Cardiff are 17th in the form table. 17th. And, like I say, Zanta should get onto that. Christian. I think Manchester United are playing the same time as us because the gap's still two points. Carpentier coming forward. One minute in. 1-0. I did say he's the most in form of our strikers at this point in time, and actually now the highest scorer of all three of them, I'm pretty certain. I think Silva tapped out at 14 before he got injured. We'll double check that one, of course. He's not necessarily been in the striking role all season. Very much operated on that left-hand side for the majority of it. But now, now we've only got seemingly one functional striker. One's injured and one just doesn't seem to want to score. We're left with that thing. So the gap, four points. <laughs> he scored again, 16. Carpentier laying the foundations. <laughs> Yes, 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 that was a fumbled attempt at making some kind of carpet reference, even though there's a bloody N in his name. I should have said something about carving an opportunity. Carpenter, you idiot. I I'm honestly surprised I've got to the end of the season without making that yet, or thinking of it. Vidarsson, not quite. Shaunan, once again, can put this in. Vidarsson, Cantoro, Shaun... Nope, oh, I mean, Shaunan has put it in. The net. The sentence was for the box initially, but no, the net will do me fine. And it's 3-0 after 25 minutes, and I'm starting to see why Cardiff are in 17th in the form table. Wow. I mean, that's... Yep. I, mean, I said wow the second they left his foot, just because of the force of it more than anything. Third goal of the year. Shaunan deciding at the end of the year, maybe he ought to do something that doesn't mean he gets used up next year. Madeira has bruised his ankle, which is always interesting. And now we're in a bit of an awkward position where it's 3-on-2. Kovalev does an inch-perfect tackle, which just gives the ball directly to the player behind him. But the problem isn't necessarily the tackles, it's just the fact the ball always just seems to go in a directly straight line to the nearest player on their side. I don't mind Kovalev not sticking the ball to his feet at the end of the tackle, because that would be just as weird. And it's definitely something to do with the game engine. It's not. It doesn't seem to ever do loose balls. I can see Man United are winning. Great. It seems to always try to make sure the ball goes to someone. When you get a tackle in. Anyway, Shaolan, Man United still two points behind. Oh, Carpentier's got a hat-trick. Lovely work. I'm glad he's come alive at the end of the season. Nice little header there. Is he, is it, did he just do left foot, right foot, headed goal? He might have done, you know. But Arsene's tap that one in. If he's onside, I'll be very bloody surprised. Oh, what a shock. Because the entire team was offside, weren't they? Oh, not actually as offside as he looked. Because obviously, Carpentier, the deliverer, was quite far advanced as well. Come on, Sheffield United. Did they have an injury or a sending off there? There's something in red. An injury. Manchester United's goal scorer has gone off with a red card, though. And they have equalised. I've just seen the equaliser. And I think everyone now is on 37 points. And I think everyone now is on 37 games. So this would seal it. A win here, seemingly basically nailed on. Madeira's coming off. We'll just protect that bruise. Somehow that's affected him to a 6.9. Bruise. I've got to pull Carpentier across, haven't I? That's the only way I can do it. Do I let anyone else off this pitch right now? No. Everyone's having a good game. I mean, Vidarsa's a bit tired, but there'll be a week to the last game anyway. Sheffield United, just keep an eye on this Sheffield United score. 85, 87. Provided Sheffield United maintain the draw at Old Trafford, we don't need anything from our arch nemesis, Norwich. The team, the team that essentially had me worried at the beginning of the year that this was all going to go a little bit less well. I mean, great English words you're using there. Yeah, I mean, when we lost to Norwich at the beginning of the year, I did kind of fear this was just going to be a consolidation year. Just nab Champions League football again and build on a title challenge to next year. I wasn't expecting to be in this position. Although, it got to be said, 85 points I think we're on right now. Yeah. So even if we win the last game, which would be 88 points, and I think right now we should have been seeing the celebrations. 
I think that's what this means. 5-0. Patrick for Comptier. Still for getting a goal as well. He was on 14. I did notice it ticked over to 15. I mean, passionately say, a thoroughly professional job. Well done. Retain the title. I mean, that's the way to do it. Thank you for the sending off. Thank you, Hal Gabriel, for getting sent off after you scored. And thank you. Thank you to my Yorkshire brethren, Sheffield United. I can I, I do see that Leeds and Huddersfield likely to go down here, although at least do have a game in hand. The trashing Cardiff might have actually saved Leeds, depending on what their two games remaining are. Looking at the teams that have games in hand, I'm not thinking it's a good <laughs> good draw, the one they have remaining, but depending who their last game's against, we can end up doing them a favour. Norwich, I do I do notice Norwich haven't quite cracked the top eight as it is now, which is a bit of a shame, considering how well they were doing. Same with West Brom, they dropped off a little bit. West Ham actually recovered quite well. They had a terrible start, I'm fairly certain. We do the double... Oh, because we got the Community Shield this year. We did. And of course, FA Cup to come as well. Two in a row. I mean, that's the way to do it. Medals. Medals for people. Nacell didn't play a game, did he? I don't think he was registered. Did I get him one last year? I can't remember if I got him a medal last year or not. He's had a medal for something at some point. He was in one of the Cups. Anyway, a 9.6 from Carpentier. From our, it says 9.6. It's a perfect 10, in my opinion. It's a perfect 10. Three goals. Did everything he needed to do. And considering none of you asked me about winning the title... You don't get to ask me these questions right now, although I will still answer them. This club means business. I did like that question. Many think maybe the time is right for you to try your hand elsewhere. Never. Never ever. Oh, absolutely not. I love it here. It's weird that we don't pay anything out straight away. Maybe maybe that comes through tomorrow. Oh, I do have next year's budgets, by the way. Those get set as soon as you qualify for the Champions League. It's about 300 extra grand a, a week in the wages and 85 million. It's not a massive amount. I mean, last year, Man United got to 88 points. That's the maximum we can get to this year. It's a fairly comparable year when you look at it towards the end in terms of the total points. 88. I mean, 88 has won it most years, actually. <laughs> if we beat Norwich, we'll end up at 88. So three of the four last years will have won the title with 88 points. Whoever has won it, which is kind of weird. But when it comes to the rest, there is a dramatic drop for everyone else. Because last year there was another challenger in 82, the year before 79. Like most years, there's been sort of three challenges. This year, it's been a two-horse race at the end when it came to York and Man United. There's been other challenges over the year, and past positions is something I'm very interested in. I'm not going to include Man City because they never really... I mean, they got to second at one point, but they're sort of the four challenges that were with us at various points during the year. We're the blue line, and you can see after the Norwich loss, which I think was this one here, yeah, we were as low as eighth after week five, it was, admittedly, but we did claw our way back up. But the majority of the year, we spent at... Let's well, say the majority of the year... Pretty much the entire first half of the year, we spent third. And then something just changed where these two teams just dropped off over the Christmas period, I presume that was. I know what, I know what it was. It was Arsenal beating them. And that just, just left us in first. And then Arsenal came to play for a little bit and fell off again. Not quite sure why he's saying Man United have joined us on first there. That's very weird. But there it is, your crown champions. And that's where I'm leaving you today. Of course, tomorrow, an FA Cup. A time to get our second one of those as well after losing out last year. So, haha, <laughs> thank you for joining me. Until next time, ta -ra.